we always do about this time. <laughs> G-O-D, G-O-D. <laughs> See, you're lucky, man. You're lucky to be around me, nigga. Dropping knowledge across the nation with the full power of Sirius XM satellite technology. This is the Luke Thomas Show on Sirius XM Rush 93. Little Cameron. Very good. I like that. All right, welcome back. Luke Thomas Show, 844-796-7874, 844-SXM-RUSH. Joining us now is a pioneer in MMA, one of the most important figures in its development, maybe the best referee in the sport. Well, maybe the best referee that used to be because he's now the official Bellator color commentator. Well, he'll make his debut in that role at Bellator 192 on January 2nd, excuse me, January 20th. The one and only Big John McCarthy is here. Mr. McCarthy, how are you? I am good, Mr. Thomas. How you doing, Luke? I am good. I have to say, I found this news surprising, but the more I think about it, the more I think it's actually a pretty shrewd move by you and by Bellator as well. So let's get a big picture view here. Number one, can you officially declare, are you retiring? And if so, why now? <laughs> I, you know what? I'm just stepping away to go do a new job. That's what I'm doing. I am uh, I'm part of uh, Bellator now. I'm there to you know, hopefully uh, take over from one of the best color commentators there's ever been, and it's going to continue on in Jimmy Smith. And I'm just lucky that I'm getting the opportunity to do that. So you could have potentially entertained the idea of going back to officiating at some point down the road. You're not 100% closing the door. Nope, I'm not closing any door. I'm still uh, I'm still licensed to do. You know, uh, I have a boxing event that I'm doing the day after doing a Bellator event. So. Wow. You know, I, I I do officiating that people don't even know about it. So will I still be a licensed official doing some co- you know combat sports? Yep. Interesting. Okay. So what was intriguing about this job that it uh, you know in, uh, enticed you enough to at least temporarily walk away from MMA officiating and uh, strap on the headset? Well, um, you know the, the truth is I got hurt. Back in July of 2017, I got hurt bad. Um, it was dur- during training. I was, you know, grappling with some guys, and uh, I was, uh, I was to the point I got held in a in a choke that I was letting the guy do because we were we were training it, but he wasn't doing it right. And I was fine after, and the next day I was a mess, man. It it screwed me up and ended up crushing a couple of my discs and breaking them off and. I ended up having two surgeries off of it, and that's why I was gone for a little bit because uh, I got to the point I couldn't even move my arm. And it made me open my eyes and that, look at, you know, I love what I do, but there is no security in it at all. And if you, uh, if I get hurt, then I'm out, and I'm out away from MMA completely, and I, I didn't want that. And when this opportunity came about, and trust me, this opportunity came about in one week's time. Uh, it, I, I got a call from Scott Coker after Jimmy uh, Smith came out saying that he was parting ways with uh, Bellator, and I got a call from Scott asking me if I would, uh, you know, like a chance to audition for that because you know he had talked to me about you know getting me on broadcast before, and I thought about it and I said, you know what, yeah, I want the I want the chance to see how I do, and I went out to Los Angeles and did the audition for him, and uh, I was lucky enough to be picked to to be able to replace. You know, like I said, one of the great color commentators there is in Jimmy Smith for MMA. And, you know, my job now is to work my ass off to get to the level where, you know, I'm doing things the way he did. So if this opportunity had not arisen, how would you have moved on from officiating? Or were you looking at other opportunities to at least take a break from it outside of this one that came around relatively recently? Yeah, I can tell you, you know, Luke, I had, uh, I had three job uh, offers, you know, and, you know, my fourth was to stay doing what I was doing because I love it. My, the biggest problem I had is I was traveling so much, you know, I, I'm doing a lot more shows than people see on TV, and so I was doing two and three and sometimes four shows a week, and that was getting to me, and I had already decided with my wife, hey, I was going to back off of how many shows I was doing. And I had a couple of job opportunities out there, but nothing that I was to the point of, man, I, you know, I could leave, you know, officiating to do that. And this is the last one that came up. And like I said, it came up fast. It came up within, 
you know, basically in a week's time here. And it was something that excites me. It makes me, I get to stay with the sport that I love. I get to work with people that I love. You know, I've been around Goldberg forever. You know, me and Mikey are friends. I get, you know, Scott Fishman, who's, the, you know, one of the, the guys that's going to be working with me. He's, you know, been part of the sport since Spike was doing the Ultimate Fighter and John Norton. And I'm just so lucky I get to work with people that I consider friends and that are going to help teach me and help, you know, progress me along the way that it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Hmm. Big John McCarthy joins us here on the Luke Thomas show. All right, Big John. So I was thinking about this. I don't. There's been a lot of high level fighters who have been referees. There's been some interesting person. Or excuse me, that have been commentators. There's been some interesting personalities as well, and guys with different fight experience. But I don't think there's ever been somebody who's been a high level. Uh, tenured referee who has, and judge too, who has done this kind of a job in commentating, you're kind of a unicorn in that respect, right? So to what extent is that going to be your responsibility or do they, I mean, obviously they want you to call on that, but have you thought about how you're going to balance calling X's and O's as well as that other insight that you bring from, you know, 20 plus years of doing that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, look at my job be it in the fight with what fighters are doing. You know, I, I'm going to give you kudos right now. People, you know, don't realize how good you are at breaking down what fighters do and why they're successful in, in a certain thing or, or why, they're, why they're not. And that's, you know, that's my job as the color commentator quickly in the broadcast. But the one thing that I can bring that, you know, there's nobody out there right now that truly understands mixed martial arts rules and what referees are doing and what the judges are looking for as well as I do right now. And I can bring that in an educating form towards the fans so they get the right information so they understand why is it that the judges are not giving credit for that takedown because it wasn't a takedown. It was a change of position. And I'm going to be able to explain that along with what the fighters are doing. That's my job. My job is to, you know, if it's Goldberg or Ronaldo, you know, putting out the information, my, my job is just then polish it up so everyone can easily disseminate it and understand exactly what the fighters are doing and why. Hmm. Now, in terms of your health, you mentioned you know, that you had a bit of the scare, but you've been on the mend. Are you fully healed insofar as you can be, or is this still an ongoing process of trying to get better each day? No, I mean, I'm as healed as I'm going to ever be. <laughs> am, yeah. I, am I 100%? <laughs> no, I don't think I'm ever going to be 100%. And that's, you know, part of it is, you know, because I had such nerve damage that it, it ate, I mean, it, I, I don't know any other way to say it, it ate the muscle off of my back and shoulders. It just, you know, because I was having, you know, this constant crush of these nerves until they finally got them uh, a little bit of space there. I mean, it was tearing me apart. And I am on the men still. You know, I'm able to, you know, for a while there, I couldn't lift five pounds. I can lift 55, you know, with an arm now. So it's like I'm way better, but I'm still not back. And that was part of my uh, thought process and why I'm uh, making the switch. Now, that being said, one of the concerns that was raised, and I think it's fair, at least from someone in our vantage point, either media or consumer, which is, this might be a great move for Bellator. Hey, this might be a great move for Big John. But it's a little bit concerning, not majorly so, but a little bit concerning about the state of officiating. Now, it's better in many ways, in part because of the work you've done, but you're not just one of the more capable referees out there. You're also very busy. Are you worried by stepping away, at least insofar as the higher echelon of MMA is concerned, Bellator or UFC, that your presence in this commentary booth will have a negative effect on the kind and quality of officiating we're getting elsewhere? You know, I don't believe so. I I, I look at you know my peers and the, the people that I work with in uh, the UFCs or Bellators. You, you got Jason Herzog, Herb Dean. Mark Goddard, Dan Mergulatas, Jaron Vallels, uh, Leon Roberts. You have you have a good good bullpen of referees that are out there. The real question is, you know, how people are accepting of newer guys, the guys stepping up, the, the ones that they don't know too well. Because right now, people are okay with you know if Herb goes out and makes a mistake, 
they're okay with that because they've seen him do it right so many times. It was the same as they were for me. You know, look, at we're, we're all human. We're going to make mistakes. But they believe in certain officials, and they believe that, you know, when that official steps in there, that the, the, the fight's going to be called right, it's going to be fair for the fighters, and the fighters are going to be protected. And with the people that, you know, are out there right now in that group that do the high-level fights, look at the, you know, those guys are going to do a great job. I have no concerns. I can tell you when I was working with them, I was always happy when they got that big fight because I knew it was going to be done the right way and, and the fighters were going to be safe. What people really need to do is they need to give the, the younger guys, you know, the Todd Andersons of the world, you know, when they see him and they want perfection right off the start and you've got to give those people a break. The, the big difference is, you know, when, when I step into the cage or Herb steps into the cage or Mark Goddard, you know, it, it's a huge fight. It's, you know, Conor McGregor versus Eddie Alvarez or Conor and uh, Nate or something like that. You know, uh, my heart rate is at about, eh, it's probably about 85 or 90. I'm a little excited, but I'm pretty calm. But if you take the young official and you put them in that situation, you know, standing still, their heart rate is at about 160 beats per minute, you know, because they're scared. You know, they, there's a huge amount of expectations put upon them to get things right. They don't want to screw up. They don't want to look bad. And so, you know, that's the pressure that comes with being the official. And the only way that you can kind of get used to it is to do it. And it's going to take some of those guys, you know, time, you know, as far as the younger guys. But, you know, MMA officiating has come a long way. And we've got some really great guys out there doing it, and they're going to do a great job in the future. Are you still involved with the course you developed, Command? Yes, sir. Absolutely, I will continue on with that. I have, I have a, a group now of uh, uh, instructors for it that are going around and putting on courses so other officials, you know, the, the one thing with MMA that we don't have, it's not like the NFL or Major League Baseball where they bring all the officials together. So, hey, this is what you're supposed to do, and this is why. You know, our information gets disseminated in a very broken and fragmented fashion through training courses that only a select few are able to attend. So my big thing is in trying to get those training things out to everybody in the same fashion, that they're getting the same information. But I will still continue on to be a uh, instructor uh, with the course and in trying to uh, better official knowledge of our sport. Big John McCarthy joins us here on the Luke Thomas Show. When you have listened to MMA broadcasts, even by very talented fighters, even by and especially by well-intentioned people, they're not trying in any way to bring any kind of misinformation, but nevertheless, they probably do. Uh, even someone in my position, I can tell you how many times I've gotten officiating rules wrong, especially in this new world where you know it can vary fairly widely state to state. How much yeah. misinformation has been spread out there, even by well-intentioned people in that commentary booth? Oh, a ton. You know, and it's it's funny because, you know, I, I, I love Joe Rogan, and I think Joe Rogan is phenomenal at what he does. Uh, he has given an energy and a, uh, a face to the commentating of MMA that, you know, I'm not sure anyone else could have done it the way he did it. But there's times when, you know, Joe's wrong. And, you know, when I'm teaching courses, I'll sit there and don't listen to Joe Rogan because Joe just, he can't know it all. He, it's His job is not to, you know, understand everything that a referee should be doing or why or what the rule is. It's tough because things do change. And he's got a whole life outside of commentating. And Jimmy Smith does. And when you're looking at the fighters, the fighters sometimes, you know, when you're looking at guys that are commentating, it's not only do they not know what they're saying, sometimes commentating, they don't know what the rule is when they're fighting. And my job has always been, you know, if, I, if I had that fighter as you know, I was refereeing it, I wanted them to know exactly what they were allowed to do, what they weren't, what I was going to do in a certain situation in the fight. Well, this is my chance to educate the fans. I want the fans to know. The more the fans know about the sport, the more the fans understand the rules of the sport, the more they're going to enjoy things because that controversial word kind of gets pushed to the side when the correct information is put out. Before you go, Big John, if one of your commentary partners says, let's get it on, are you going to strangle them? <laughs> no, I'll just sit there and say, God, nice job. <laughs> no, no, 
I will not strangle him. I think you know that's going to be uh, that's you know that's used at certain times, but that's for fun. Yeah, that's for the referees to do. That's not for the commentators. All right, fair enough. Well, you're going to be making your commentary debut at Bellator 192. This will be January 20th at, on what is now Spike, but turning into the Paramount Network. Uh, Big John, thank you for making time for us. I can't wait to see you and hear you in the commentary booth. And uh, this is an interesting and important career change for you. We're excited to see it all unfold. Thank you very much, Luke. I appreciate it. You take care.